Greetings, everybody. Turn your King James Bible to Isaiah chapter 48. This is going to be the continuation of the Isaiah commentary series. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All right, verse 1, Isaiah 48, verse 1. Hear ye this, O house of Jacob, which are called by the name of Israel, and are come forth out of the waters of Judah, which swear by the name of the Lord, and make mention of the God of Israel, but not in truth, nor in in righteousness. Is there a New Testament reference to this? I think so. Matthew 15, 8. This people draweth nigh, or near, this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Mark 7, 6. He, Jesus, answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah, Greek rendering of Isaiah, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Let's go back to Isaiah 48, verse 2. For they call themselves of the holy city, and stay themselves upon the God of Israel. The Lord of hosts is his name. I have declared the former things from the beginning, and they went forth out of my mouth, and I showed them. I did them suddenly, and they came to pass. Because I knew that thou art obstinate. What's obstinate? Stubborn. It means no matter, even if you show people their error of their ways, they won't change their opinion. Because I knew thou art obstinate. So the Lord knew that Israel was obstinate. And thy neck is an iron sinew, and thy brow brass. I have even from the beginning declared it to thee before it came to pass, I showed it thee, lest thou shouldest say, Mine idol hath done them, and my graven image, and my molten image hath commanded them. Uh, I don't think so. Verse 6. Thou hast heard, see all this, and will, and will not ye declare it? I have showed thee new things from this time, even hidden things, and thou didst not know them. They are created now, and not from the beginning, even before the day when thou heardest them not, lest thou shouldest say, Behold, I knew them. Yea, thou heardest not, yea, thou knewest not, yea, from that time that thine ear was not opened, for I knew that thou wouldest deal very treacherously, and was called a transgressor from the womb. For my name's sake will I defer mine anger, and for my praise will I refrain for thee, for thee, that I cut thee not off. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Now, what's a refiner? Well, a refinery takes the rocks out of the ground of various metals, whether it be iron or silver or gold, and then they melt them. And then normally the impurities floats on top because the metal sinks to the bottom since it's heavier 
and then they skim the top. So, ladies, if you've ever uh, skimmed the fat from the top of something you were cooking, along those lines. So, the furnace of affliction. The Lord's trying to burn the bad stuff out of our lives. And using the fires of affliction for punishment. Those of you that have had children, sometimes you got to spank them. There was a, a Dr. Spock. No, not Star Trek. But uh, he was a nice uh, member of the Chosenites, very kosher. And he says, oh, parents should never spank their kids, contrary to what the Bible says. You know, it's funny, they always claim the Bible is their book, but they always teach the opposite of everything that it says. You know, that's why Christ said, you hypocrites. Well, he had a kid, Spock, had a kid. Kids committed suicide. I guess he couldn't live with all the devils inside him, I don't know. But uh, they always... These psychiatrists and psychologists always teach the opposite of what the Bible says. Oh, yeah, you got a multiple personalities? Take this drug. No, don't take them to a real church and have the devils cast out of them. Oh, no, we can't do that. But then again, finding a real church is, uh, yeah, I, I think you'd have a better chance of finding money falling out of the back of a Brinks truck. But uh, what can I tell you? Behold, I refine thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. For mine own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my called. I am he. I am the first. I also am the last. Didn't Jesus say he's the first and the last, the Alpha and Omega? Oh, yeah. Verse 13. My hand also hath laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand hath spanned the heavens. When I call unto them, they stand up together. All ye assemble yourselves and hear, which among them hath declared these things? The Lord hath loved him. He will do this pleasure on Babylon, and his arm shall be on the Chaldeans. Okay, verse 15. I, even I, have spoken, yea, I have called him, I have brought him, and he shall make his way prosperous. Come ye near unto me, Hear ye this, I have not spoken in secret. From the beginning, from the time that it was, there am I, and now the Lord God and his Spirit hath sent me. Sounds like a reference to Christ. God the Father and the Holy Spirit hath sent me. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer. Now, who's the Redeemer? Christ. I mean, obviously. And if you don't understand that concept, uh, write me a comment, and I'll, uh, I'll write you a book. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which te teacheth thee to profit which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. O oh, that thou hadst hearkened to my commandments. Then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Thy seat also had been as the sand, and the offspring of thy bowels, 
like the gravel thereof. His name should not have been cut off nor destroyed from before thee. Go ye forth of Babylon, flee ye from the Chaldeans, with a voice of singing declare ye, tell this, utter it even to the end of the earth, say ye, the Lord hath redeemed his servant Jacob. And they thirsted not when he led them through the deserts, he caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. He clave the rock also, and the waters gushed out. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Now that verse 21, And they thirsted not when he led them through the deserts. He caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. He clave the rock also, and the waters gushed out. That is a reference to what happened under Moses. When Israel left Egypt, they wandered through the desert. I don't know how many of you have ever been in a desert, but nothing but sand. No plants, hardly, if there is, you know, cactus. Uh, you know, there's no water. You go three days without water in a desert, and uh, you're dead. That's just the way it is. So, how do you provide water for hundreds of thousands of people? Well, they carried the rock. This story can be found in Numbers chapter 20, verse 1. Then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of Zin. There was a in the King James, they spell it Z-I-N. Uh, but there's also reference to the desert of Sin, S-I-N. So I don't know if it's just a spelling variation. Um, you have to realize something. It wasn't until uh, the late 1700s and 18... I think Webster in 1828 uh, standardized the spelling in America. And I think it was 1769 when they updated the spelling for the uh, King James Bible. Of course, they'll tell you, ah, oh, well, they revised it. No, they just standardized the spelling. Uh, those of you that have taken English literature, old English literature in college, uh, I tell you what, try to read the uh, poem Beowulf, B E O W O uh, W O L F, I think it's spelled Beowulf. It's written in Old English, which is basically Anglo Saxon. Good luck. I took Old English, uh, I took English literature in college, you know, like stuff even older than Shakespeare. Good luck trying to read that stuff. I mean, it's. You know, that's why I, one of the reasons why I don't have a problem reading the King James. I realize now the Lord was preparing me for this. But, uh, yeah, the, the, the read Beowulf. You know, you'd have a hard time reading that. I know I did. So what they did was they standardized the spelling and they updated, you know, they just updated everything. They didn't change anything. I mean, you might have four different ways to spell the same word back before then. So, you know, you need to be standardized. But uh, Webster, in 1828, put out a dictionary. He was a linguist, which is a, bi uh, a language scholar. He spoke over 20 languages fluently. He knew the Bible languages of the Old Testament, Hebrew. He knew the New Testament language of Greek fluently. And uh, he standardized the spelling. That's why in England, color is spelled C-O-L-O-U-R. But in America, it's C-O-L-O-R. And honor, 
H-O-N-O-U-R in England and H-O-N-O-R in the United States. Slight difference, but, you know, we spell a tire on a car, T-I-R-E. In England, it's T-Y-R-E, you know, so slight variation there. So let's go back to Numbers 20. Then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of Zin in the first month. And the people abode in Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there. And there was no water for the congregation, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. Hey, Moses, there ain't no water here, you idiot. You bring us in the desert and there's no water. We're going to die here. I can hear them now. Just like the, the rabble crowd that went to Pilate and said, Not this man, but Barabbas. Crucify him. Same type of deal, right? Verse 3, And the people chode with Moses and spake, saying, Would God that we, we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. And why have ye brought up the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness that we and our cattle should die there. And wherefore have ye made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us in unto this evil place? It is no place of seed or of figs or of vines or of pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink. Oh yeah, O oh ye of little faith, right? And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod and gather, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye, listen carefully, and speak ye unto the rock, and speak ye unto the rock, See, they were carrying a rock. Um, some people say it was Jacob's pillow. Jacob's pillar. Um, Jacob took a rock and made it his pillow. Um, Bible doesn't specifically say so, but that's what some people believe. And I'm not going to tell you they're wrong. I'm not going to tell you they're right. All right, so the Lord says in verse 8, Take the rod and gather thou together, uh, the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. Now this is where Moses mess, messes up. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord and as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them, Here now, ye rebels, must we, must we fetch you water out of this rock? As if Moses and Aaron are, are you know, who, who's we, you know? Remember that uh, Clint Eastwood line in the, the robber's, you know, uh, what was it, Dirty Harry or whatever? He goes, uh, who's we, sucka? And then Clint pulls out the uh, 44 Magnum and says, me and Smith and Wesson. Yeah, Aaron and Moses saying, here now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? As if it was by the power of their hand. No, no. You see, Moses failed to give the Lord the glory. He should have said, Must the Lord fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote, smote struck, smote the rock twice. That's not what the Lord said to do. Not twice. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the congregation of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring 
this congregation into the land which I have given them. So Moses was able to see the promised land from across the river, but he wasn't allowed to go over because of this thing. Verse 13. This is the water of Mirabah, because the children of Israel strove with the Lord, and he was sanctified in them. So when you read Mirabah, it has reference to stroving or striving with the Lord, you know, basically doubting and fighting against, you know. I mean, here it is. They'd seen all the miracles. They didn't pay any attention. I don't know. What idiots. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1, now remember, Corinth was a city in Greece, and Paul is writing to the Greeks. And listen to what he's saying. Verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. What does ignorant mean? It means you don't know something. doesn't mean you're stupid. No, it just means you lack knowledge. When it comes to rocket science, brain surgery, I'm ignorant. I admit it. When it comes to the Bible, not so much. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Do you know that there was a, a cloud by day that led the children of Israel through the desert and a pillar of fire by night? And they all passed through the sea. What sea? The Red Sea. Remember when Moses parted the land? I mean the sea under to make it dry land when Pharaoh was chasing them. And then Pharaoh's army tried to cross over and the Red Sea closed up on them and drowned them. Yeah, that sea. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. See, Israel was basically spiritually in a sense they were baptized going through the Red Sea verse 3 and did all eat the same spiritual meat what did they eat what spiritual meat manna from heaven verse 4 listen carefully here's the punchline and did all drink and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Ah, remember they asked Moses uh, for water, and the Lord said, you know, the out of the, out of the rock would come forth water. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Christ. There you go, people. Christ was there with Moses, and Paul is telling the Corinthians that they were with, that the church was with Moses when they crossed the Red Sea. Boy, you won't hardly ever hear that preached in a church. They just, they don't want us to know these things. I mean, it's it's sad, really. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.